Thanks very much. Hello. <laughs> right. Is it the red button? The right hand button. Okay, need to get that right. Hello, everybody. How lovely to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I feel like quite a lot of pressure now because the two speakers before me were so good. Uh, I don't have any free beer to give you, um, and I don't have a TV series yet. Uh, but again, like uh, the last speaker, that's given me ideas about what we can do in the future. Um, I'm here to talk to you about Tech Mums. Um, and to do that, I'm going to start by talking a bit about me, because I think that the reason uh, that I'm interested in women in technology and in empowering women uh, stems from my background and my life and what's happened to me. And uh, actually, when, when I arrived here at lunchtime, I, I sat with some very nice people uh, and chatted to them over lunch, who are here somewhere, but I can't see them. Um, and uh, I said, well, so what have you been talking about this morning? You know, what's been happening? And the words uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and self-actualization uh, came up. Oh, I can see you now. Hello. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, actually, that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about today because I'm going to talk about where I started my journey and where I've ended up. And that's kind of me moving over quite a long time now, uh, towards self-actualization, self I suppose. And I think uh, if you're going to run a business which is to be successful, which I think um, the whole brew dog story was about as well, then you need to be moving towards that self-actualization. That's what's going to make it happen because that's what you'll be passionate about. So, uh, tech mums. Uh, I don't know if anyone can guess who this gorgeous little girl is. Uh, but a few years ago, amazingly, that's what I looked like. Um, someone asked me a while ago, when did I first know that I was a geek? And I thought back, and I thought back to this kind of time when I was about eight or nine, and um, what I used to do, what did I like then, I was thinking. And uh, one of the things that kind of brought it home to me that I was a geek from an early age was that one thing that I used to do was save up my pocket money every week so that when we went to WH Smith's in Basildon, very exciting, um, I could buy maths textbooks with my pocket money in WH Smith's. <laughs> and I would like race, ho you know, race home and uh, sit in my bedroom for hours solving, solving uh, like maths, maths questions in uh, maths textbooks that I'd bought in WH Smith's. Um, so I was a geek from the outset, I suppose, is uh, what I'm trying to say with that. Um, so, at that age, everything was great. I had a mum and a dad and a brother and sister. Um, but what happened was that my mum died when I was 12. Um, my dad remarried and things weren't so great as they were before. Uh, I left home at 16 uh, with five O levels, which was okay, but, you know, not that great. And um, started working. So, I did various jobs. Then when I was 20, I got married. And by the age of 23, here I am with three children. Uh, so ne never one to do anything by halves. Uh, yeah, here I am with three kids at the age of uh, 23. Um, kind of education was off the cards. And what happened then was that my marriage went wrong. And so I ended up being not only 25, I think, as I was then, but 25, a single parent with three children living on a council estate. Um, so you'd think that, uh, you know, my career's probably gone for some time and uh, I wouldn't be getting into education anytime soon. But what actually happened was that um, after getting divorced at 25, um, I decided that actually education was the way out for me. It was the way for me to make a big change in my life. Um, and then I wasn't actually so worried about myself, but I was worried about my kids. How was I going to bring them up? How was I going to give them a good life uh, if I could only really go out and earn minimum wage once they were all at school. So basically I went to night school, did a maths course, got um, university entry and um, did a degree in computer science, then did a PhD in computer science, became a, a lecturer, got promoted a few times, became head of a computer science department. Uh, kind of, an, and uh, so yeah, that's leading on to where I am today, I suppose, or a few years ago. Uh, so basically, uh, 20 years as a computer science academic. I know I don't look old enough. Um, 
Uh, and here's me at various events speaking. I was on a lecture tour in Brazil speaking about Alan Turing. And, uh, and so I've had a successful academic computer science degree. I, um, so on the outside of that, I've always been a person that uh, if I see a problem, something that I think is wrong, I have to go and sort it out. Now, obviously, there are lots of problems, so I, I've, I've only chosen a few to really focus on. Uh, the first one that uh, really bothered me was um, the kind of lack of support and networks for women in computing. So I set up uh, an online network for women in computing in uh, 1998 and another in 2001 uh, called BCS Women uh, to try and solve that, putting isolated women in computing in touch with each other online. Um, another problem that I saw in 2003, I first went to Bletchley Park. Who's been to Bletchley Park here? Yay, you get bonus points. <laughs> I'll buy you all a drink in the bar at the end. Um, I went to Bletchley Park in 2003. In my head, I thought that um, Bletchley Park was about code breaking, um, didn't really know that much about it. I thought probably about 50 old guys worked there cracking codes, doing the Times crossword. They were probably wearing tweed jackets and, uh, um, yeah, smoking pipes or something. Um, and so the first time I went there in 2003, I was amazed to find out that actually 10,000 uh, people were there and that more than half of them were women. So I thought that was incredible. And I raised funds to run the Women of Station X project, or Bletchley Park was also called Station X. Um, at the launch of that, I found out that Bletchley Park were having financial difficulties. So being a head of department, I emailed all the heads and profs in the country of computer science, um, asked them to sign a letter to the Times, which we sent in, and um, managed to get us on BBC News, basically, in today's programme. So that's what this is here. It's me on uh, BBC News in 2008 saying, we must save Bletchley Park. Um, and so getting to the BBC and the Times, traditional media. That worked really well, but what happens with traditional media is one day it's a story, and the next day it's not a story anymore. So in 2008, I was kind of looking around for how to make that um, uh, higher profile, how to keep uh, Bletchley Park in the news. And so basically, uh, what I did was use Twitter. I could talk for hours about using Twitter and social media and campaigning. Um, but that's not why I'm here today. Uh, but one of the highlights of that was actually getting Stephen Fry involved and him tweeting. Uh, the, the top photo here is him stuck in a lift at centre point um, and not able to get out. So he tweeted a photo saying, can anyone get us out of this lift in centre point? Um, and I saw the photo and I thought, hang on, Stephen Fry, he must be interested in Bletchley Park. Uh, so that night um, I tweeted him and luckily... Uh, he was interested, and so here's his tweet the next day. I'd set up a blog called Saving Bletchley Park, um, and I was normally getting about 50 hits a day on it, which I thought was amazing. Uh, uh, back in 2008 or 2009, I suppose that was okay. Um, and then Stephen Fry tweeted, and I got 8,000 hits that day, so it was like, whoa. So it was very clear what a difference having uh, someone influential on board was. So... <laughs> Over to tech mums. Um, so that was a bit about my history and who I am and what I've done and what I care about. Um, I think now in the UK, we've got a problem. I think the problem is that lots of us understand technology and how important it is, but the average person in the street doesn't. Um, being in computer science for 20 years, when I talk to people in my peer group about technology, it's mainly positive. When I talk to people right outside of my peer group about technology, I seem to get the reaction either that it's very boring, or I'm very boring, I'm not sure which, maybe it's just me. Uh, I'm very boring, uh, it, it's just too difficult, or I'm so clever that, you know, how could they understand uh, what I'm talking about? Um, or that it's all about big government IT systems that have failed and we've all wasted our, our money on. Um, so that kind of makes me think of this. So what, what, what's, the, um, what's the catchphrase from this uh, Little Britain sketch, anyone know? Yeah, computer says no. <laughs> so I just that's what I think of from those conversations. I think most people just don't get it. So, and I think in the UK we've got this amazing heritage in technology, in invention, in innovation. If we think back to the Industrial Revolution, we were kind of out there at the forefront. We were using child labour and taking over the world. <laughs> okay, it wasn't just child labour. 
Um, and so that was the industrial revolution. Now it's the digital revolution. And, you know, we have kids doing stuff on iPads. But are we really going to be at the forefront of the digital revolution? I think with our heritage that we should be. But will we? If we don't have a, a workforce that kind of understands the positive uh, benefits of technology. So this is, this is a, a drawing that you can see that I made up. <laughs> um, which I've called the Savify effect because, uh, so my organization, my startup that I've got now is called Savify, and it's all about helping people to become tech savvy. Um, and so, as you can see from this, what I think we need to do uh, for the UK to kind of hold its position or even strengthen its position uh, in the future is exactly what it says here on the diagram with my wonderful PowerPoint arrows. Um, I think that if we can empower individuals to understand the benefits of technology, then in turn that will empower organisations to understand and take up all these benefits in technology. And all these organisations then collectively will then help the UK to become more tech savvy and to be able to innovate and understand all the benefits of technology. And so basically starting with people all the way through, um, we'll end up with a UK that's much more uh, able to take up the benefits that there are out there in the digital world now. And these benefits uh, and opportunities are, be are going to become more and more and more. I mean, I'm sure I, I don't need to tell you that, but lots of people still don't really understand that that's what's happening. So I've set up this organisation called Savify. Here's me and Claire and Emma, who work with me in Savify. We've got our first project is called Tech Mums. We're all mums. Here we are with our 11 children between us. I've now got four children. Um, and my, my kids from the uh, photo when I was 23 are all grown up now. Two of them work in the cabinet office and one works in the city. Uh, and I've also got a little child as well. Um, so we're mums with 11 kids between us, uh, and we think passionately that the best place to start with basically educating the nation about the benefits of technology is to start with mums. My first thought was to start with kids before I thought about starting with mums because I thought, well, if we change the way kids see things, kids are the future, you know, that will sort it out. But basically, what after trying to do that, what it brought home to me was that, well, so if the kids understand it, but then they go home to the parents, and the parents are negative towards technology, we didn't get very far. So thinking about it for quite some time, I realised that if we started with mums and changed the way that mums see things, that, that would um, change the way the whole family sees things, because I think quite a lot of the time mums are kind of the, the linchpin in terms of influence within the family. And so if we can get into the key influencers, so like um, Stephen Fry with social media, if we get to the mums first and change the way they see things, it will benefit the whole family, and then it will benefit the whole community, and that will benefit the whole country. So we decided to put together a programme called Tech Mums, which is to help mums to understand technology and the positive benefits and opportunities there are with technology. Um, and before we started actually running the programme, we did uh, a survey with Mumsnet, and from the 1,000 mums that answered, luckily 65% said they would be interested in a free course um, around technology skills, so that gave us a bit of confidence that we knew what we were doing. Uh, we talked to various companies, we asked, or I asked eSkills if they would accredit our uh, programme, and they said yes, which is great. We also work with... Um, Intellect and Apps for Good, uh, Mumsnet, RS Components and Social Safe. Um, so we've got some very good uh, partners working with us to make sure uh, that we have a great programme. We, the programme is, at the moment, five weeks, two hours a week. It's run through the school and we get uh, self-selecting mums coming in and we help them with basic, uh, like creating a document, adding a photo, um, setting up an email account, adding attachments, kind of basic, what we'd call probably basic computing skills in the first week. The second week, we do app design. The third week, we do web design. The fourth week, we do social media and online security. And the fifth week, we do uh, Python coding on Raspberry Pis. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And so it's funny because as part of our survey as well that went out to Mumsnet before, um, we, we didn't know exactly what to put in the programme. I knew what I wanted to get in there, which was coding, uh, and, and some other stuff as well. Because I believe that if you understand what software is, uh, it's a list of instructions, it's telling the computer to do something, um, and you have a sort of play around with hardware, you're just much more likely to be positive about um, technology, I think. So I, I was... I knew that, uh, sorry, that um, coding should be in there at some point, you know, regardless almost of what else was in there. When we sent our survey out, we had a list of uh, things that we were going to include, and coding was one of those uh, things. And it got the least amount of mums <laughs> wanting uh, to do it out of everything else that we suggested, but I was adamant that it should stay in. Um, and one of the great things, uh, once we'd run the program the first time, was that... Uh, we asked all the mums on our pilot program, which class did you like best? And which one do you think they liked? <laughs> yeah, Python coding Raspberry Pis. That was wonderful. So it was kind of like vindication for me that I forced that into the program. Um, so we've had some great mums on our pilot. Here's Amina. Um, Amina used to run a market stall selling school uniform. Then she, uh, that went well, so she set up a shop in Tower Hamlets. That's going really well. One of the problems she had was that if someone wanted any samples from her, uh, she would get her son, who's about 12 or 13, to take the samples across London to show uh, a customer. And um, she said, if only I could just add email attachments, you know, if I could add a photo of my samples to my emails, he wouldn't have to go across <laughs> London to take these samples. Now, that's a really, really simple problem. But if you don't know anyone who knows how to do that, how do you solve it? So, you know, basically, the mums all were all very switched on, but just didn't know how to do some very, very basic things. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that we managed to help them do that. Uh, so Amina's son now doesn't have to go across London anymore because she can take a photo of her samples and, and attach them to an email. Um, this is China. China was worried about her um, child on Facebook, basically, didn't know what to do, how to control it, whether to control it, just, just what to do around that whole area. And so our fourth class on um, social media and online security, we taught all the mums how to set up their, their Facebook security settings so that they just didn't have to worry about that anymore. So that's just two small examples, really, uh, of what we've done. We had a researcher from Brunel University come in um, all the way through and give questionnaires out to our mums over the five weeks. And uh, we were delighted to find that not only did their confidence with technology improve, but their actual, their general confidence in themselves improved too. Um, so we were delighted with that. And actually, it was really clear from seeing the mums all the way through uh, the pilot we had um, Penny Jackson come in and film them in week one and then again in the last week. And she said she couldn't believe it was the same women because they were dressing differently, they were sort of more confident, they were kind of standing more upright and confident. And when she was interviewing them, they were, you know, much more sort of um, effusive and, you know, whereas they'd been a bit shy in the beginning, it was obvious to her that their general confidence had grown as well. This is Nick Saw, who's the head of Bishop Challenger School, where we ran our pilot. Um, it, it's been amazing, really, to talk to him after running the pilot, too, because he said that not only did he see the difference in the mums that were on the course, but also in their children. Uh, and he said that uh, he, he wants us now to run it at least twice a year, every year at his school, and um, also their partner schools as well. So we're scaling up now um, across Tower Hamlets to make that happen. We've also um, put up a Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. So if you want to give us some money, please feel free. <laughs> um, uh, that's gone uh, well. We've got at least one school funded now completely from doing that. Uh, but also, while that's been up, we have found out that actually quite a few schools will pay for it themselves. So not only can we... Um, run this in schools, but actually I think the schools are going to pay for it too, which is wonderful. So now we've, we've run a pilot, we're scaling up uh, on a small scale across Tower Hamlets, running in schools. 
we're um, going to be trialling, running this where mums actually pay for themselves in Surrey, where mums probably got a bit more money than they have in Tower Hamlets. Um, so we'll be um, running it around the um, kind of Kingston, Richmond area to see uh, if mums are interested in paying for this themselves. So we're signing up mums, we're signing up uh, schools, and we're signing up volunteers who want to help too. And uh, where's our... Oh, there's all over. There's our Twitter, Savvy Tech Mums. Uh, but we're techmums.co as well if you want to or you want anyone else. You think anyone else might want to sign up on the website? Uh, and that's Tech Mums. <laughs> uh, we've got a video, so I think if we could just uh, show the video now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm Sue from Savify. I'm a computer scientist, a social entrepreneur, a campaigner, and also a mum with four kids. I'm here at Silicon Roundabout in the east of London, which is the heart of the digital community in the UK. The industry is currently worth about £121 billion. But there's a problem. If you think of someone who works in tech, you probably think of a man. You probably won't think of a woman, and I think almost certainly you won't think of someone who's a mum. I think that lots of mums uh, lack confidence around technology. Uh, they may be scared to use the computer, scared, scared even of the keyboard. And that means that they can't take up the opportunities that there are in technology. And I think that's a big problem. So at Savify, we've created Tech Mums. Tech Mums is all about helping women gain confidence and understand the opportunities that there are out there in the digital world. So in just 10 hours, we take mums through things like app design, social media, web design, uh, programming on Raspberry Pis and a bit of online security. Our aim is to help them understand what opportunities are out there and give them the confidence to be able to take those opportunities. I think workshops like this are really important because it's good to, to get people who kind of feel the same way about stuff together. I think so they were all scared of technology to start with and, and so you don't have that feeling of going into a class where everyone knows more than you. Everyone knew that they didn't really know very much at all and they were all a bit apprehensive. My daughter is quite with it when it comes to computers but um, I think I yeah, definitely have more confidence now in helping her with her homework. I've learned basic skills which I'm really pleased about. I don't feel afraid of computers anymore. I don't feel I'm an expert now, but I do feel I just want to jump into it. One of the most important things I've learned to date is that even if I'm scared, push away the fear, just go for it. And I've got to say, so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. The course, since we began, has gone really well. Um, the conversations I've had with those mums and with the children of those mums has been brilliant in how they now feel really confident that they've you know, had a chance to design an app, that they've had a chance to uh, look at online safety and be reassured that sometimes they're doing the right thing, perhaps sometimes they're not doing the right thing. We're really, really, really pleased with the course and proud of it, proud of the mums, proud of their commitment. I would absolutely offer uh, Tech Mums course again. What I would really like to do is give this opportunity to everybody that wants it across the country or even across the world. But I think, you know, I think we're, we're getting there. And not just for the mums, but for the kids and the families and the whole kind of community. We're, we're changing lives, so we want to change as many lives as possible. Tech <laughs>I just have to say that some of those mums are just incredible. One of them, Erica, has got 13 children <laughs> and runs a market stall. And, and the reason she came along was because she said that um, she's run a market stall while her kids have all been growing up, but now they're getting older, they don't want to help anymore, so she wants to set up an online business doing the same thing. Um, well, Amina, you saw there, and she, they're just incredible women, really, really incredible. And it's just... It's just um, such a privilege to be able to help them. You know, very, it doesn't take very long to help them really change their lives. And um, well, it's, just, it's just amazing. You can see with my background that really resonates with me. Um, thanks very much for your time.